The third cluster of issues I would touch on after peace and security and human rights would be global systems. And I use this term to try to bring together uh, the variety of technical agencies that work on managing globalization. And many of those agencies are, are headquartered here, but they're headquartered in many other uh, of, the, uh, of the UN cities. And if we think about uh, whether we look at aviation or maritime issues, uh, whether we look at addressing telecommunications, all of these require uh, working actively in international organizations. Dealing with global health issues in particular uh, requires working out, working through international organizations. I would suggest that the approach of the administration has been to try to look at those areas where it was important to work with others and recognize that the United States does not stand apart from the international system, but instead is actually actively uh, involved in it. And that uh, on many key issues, rather than simply developing an initiative on our own, we want to work with the international system. And I think an example of this I would give would be the food security issues. Um, as you know, the uh, US launched a, a major initiative to try to address global hunger issues. Over one billion people are actually, uh, 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 unfortunately, uh, uh, face serious hunger on a daily basis. Uh, the United States and partners worked at first at the GH to develop the L'Aquila principles, looking at country-led programs to try to improve uh, agricultural production, uh, particularly in, uh, in, in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. The effort, though consciously, was taken to the, to the UN, so we wanted to work directly with the United Nations and the UN food agencies on uh, improving our food security around the globe. The Secretary of State and the Secretary General of the UN um, hosted a session in September on food security issues attended by 130 countries. The idea, again, to say that if you're going to work on food security, you need to work with partners. So the US directly wanted to work with other partners at the UN. And most recently, then, this was adopted as a global principles uh, then at the, uh, at the uh, World Food Summit in Rome in November. So here again was an initiative which the US thought was important, but realized it needed to work with the international community as a whole in order to enhance it. So I think this is just quickly to touch on some of the major themes in which the U.S. has tried to take a multilateral approach. Non-proliferation issues, human rights issues, food security, and other human security issues. So I think I'll stop there because I'd really like to, to have a, a larger discussion on the major themes of multilateral, of multilateral issues. I said that the administration is focused on trying to find the best ways to re-engage with the multilateral community as part of its era of engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, you know, basically you're covering the whole world and you're responsible for everything, so that's what I got from your, uh, from your uh, presentation. Uh, let me just start before I open up with the first uh, uh, question. Um, so you touched upon a lot of issues, but I'm still wondering about the main actors, the main partners mm -hmm. for each uh, of the issues, and especially, of course, we are interested about, not so much about Austria, but uh, about Europe. Mm -hmm. And just recently, the European Council on Foreign Relation, Relations uh, issued an, a report uh, to which I marginally I contributed as well. But the uh, uh, idea of the report is that transatlantic relations will not uh, be as they were in the past. So there's no automatic harmonious uh, relationship between the US and, uh, and Europe. And Europe has to qualify, because the US under Obama is looking for partners who can address the major problems, all of those who, who you, you, you mentioned. So and if Europe will not be able to do so, it will be irrelevant. So that is the, uh, basically the question of it. So Europe will be one of all these actors, one of all these uh, partners. And if Europe cannot act, uh, the Obama administration would uh, look to others, uh, Asia or something. So, so maybe you can take out some of the issues, climate change, uh, non-proliferation, and say, who, who are the main partners? So I, I mentioned at the beginning, concert, G20, UN, UN so, and especially uh, uh, Europe. Thank you, and thank you. Uh, as I said, that, that if you're looking at re-engaging, you definitely, definitely need to work with partners. And I would suggest that the, the European partners, both the European Union itself and European countries, remain absolutely essential partners to working on an era of engagement. Because let, let's look at what we ask international organizations to do. Uh, we use, uh, international organizations are one place where we go to bring together countries that want to address a common problem. Forget, for example, an international health issue, perhaps, or, or an international security issue. But 
one of the uh, long-standing roles for international organizations is to be the place where we create norms, where we create standards. There might be standards on climate change, there might be standards on human rights, there might be standards on uh, arms control issues. And so that when we're looking to create global standards, almost always, the United States and European partners stand together because we draw those standards for the common values we share. So we look to each other, usually first, to say, if we're trying to think of a global standard on a particular issue, we need to have a conversation with ourselves. That doesn't mean that we're always going to agree with each other, but we realize we need to come to an understanding with each other about what that, those standards are going to be. We also ask international organizations to help the rest of the world meet those standards. So one of the questions on climate change is what sort of support and financing mechanism will there be to help countries around the world meet whatever global standards come out of the, the uh, uh, climate change process. Similarly on human rights issues, we work together on looking at particular standards, but there again we then think about how do we help uh, states, all of us, try to meet those standards. And also, uh, European partners are quite often part of that process of helping countries meet global standards because you are major donors in, in the foreign assistance field. So, so quite often, both in the standards we set and the efforts we try to provide to support those global standards, we actually have to work together first and often. Christopher, the standard in the foreign editor for the standard in Vienna. Um, I would have a follow-up on the public's perception of this new uh, American multilateralism. The U.S. was criticized uh, a couple of years ago for being so unilateral, and now they, they are criticized for being so multilateral because it doesn't pay off very, very soon, you know, or immediately. And there is a public perception in European, uh, in the, in, in European countries that Mr. Obama might be a weak president because he hasn't, he hasn't reached uh, um, um, some, something uh, which you can touch uh, in, in this nine months or so. How, how, how are you going to tackle this, this, this kind of perception in Europe? One of the important things that is key for leadership in the 21st century is being able both to have a clear vision of what you want, and the president has actually been quite articulate, but advancing in a series of speeches a view of, of the international community and the challenges of the 21st century. If you look at the speeches given in Cairo, in Prague, and at the, at the General Assembly, that he sees a role in which there will be greater connections, but also greater transnational challenges. And he sees a vital role for the United States uh, in that, and a leadership role, working with others, but a leadership role within that community. He's also made it clear there will be points where the U.S. You know, may be on our own because of certain principles that he will always defend. And I think that makes for, for, for strength. And so that uh, I think as people watch the uh, continued commitment on a range of issues, whether it's the most critical and most dangerous issues dealing with non-proliferation and those, those countries that most directly challenge international peace and security, these forceful approaches there, or whether on dealing with uh, uh, Iran or North Korea, and realizing that you have to take these questions on uh, directly, but also realizing there's a role for the international community in, su in supporting dealing with those countries. Those, I think, are real world global leadership, and I think as people follow that, they will recognize it.